Hey nerds, we are going to review the first two episodes of Star Wars, The Acolyte, starting now. Welcome to the Nerd Social, I am Colin. I'm David. We have a new Star Wars show out on Disney+, Plus, and based on the synopsis of The Acolyte, and also spoiler-free log lines of the first two episodes, synopsis reads, an investigation into a shocking crime spree pits a respected Jedi Master against a dangerous warrior from his past. As more clues emerge, they travel down a dark path where sinister forces reveal all is not what it seems. And then we have the episode one spoiler-free log line as the, the Jedi pursue a suspect after a shocking crime. And episode two, an assassin strikes again, but this time the Jedi are there to attempt capture. David, what do you think of the first two episodes of The Acolyte? I am really been looking forward to this show for a while now, ever since they announced it, especially that the actor in the show, Lee J. Jung, which everyone, if everyone knows him as in the, from the, from the K-drama show Squid Games. So I've been really high for this, but after watching the first two episodes, it's decent. I'm not disappointed because it's very new and everything we are familiar with is completely out of the door. But I'm enjoying it, and I'm really ex looking forward to see how it is after a slow start. Okay. Yeah, for me, I think that I gave it a little bit more benefit of the doubt because it is new. And, yes, there's a Star Wars universe that's out there, but this is established 100 years before everything that's happened. So I think that the newness of it, the freshness of it is really great and, is to, and to give it a chance. And I think that... The stuff that I've read online is that there's really not much given a chance to let it thrive and succeed on its own. I think we get to, to a point where sometimes we just try to either look at the old stuff and, and try to compare it with the old stuff and not take it for what it is. And Disney has gotten into trouble with this for all of its properties, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, where people are trying to grasp onto the familiar and to make sure that they can ground themselves. Yes, they're Jedi. Yes, there are some familiar things. But at the same time, there's some things that are very unfamiliar and very new. And I'd like to explore those. And it's okay to just explore them uh, for what it is. So I think it's, it was a very encouraging start, but I am looking forward to other things that will happen uh, throughout these uh, eight episodes. So that's my thoughts on it overall. Yeah, just, let me pick up something on that. This is like almost the same treatment that was given for episode one, The Phantom Menace, because it's exactly the same feeling. They're in the past, and it's something that's completely different from what they know already, and people don't give it a chance. But what they should appreciate is that they get to know more about it, because we know in episode one that there were references saying that with the Sith, we're gone for a millennium. Mm -hmm. So Acolyte could be in that timeline of where the Sith are hidden because the timeline is set in during the High Republic where the Jedi are very prosperous and there's a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Even, I have to say this everyone, Master Yoda is not in this. <laughs> because the, the Jedis were prosperous. We'll see that there's a lot of Jedis in other places besides Coruscant and where Master Yoda was. They're everywhere. And Master Yoda could be a Jedi Master, but elsewhere. Because there's a lot of people saying that, oh, I'm going to see this person, I'm going to see that person. But it was like thinking, no. The showrunner herself, remind me again the name? Leslie Headland. Leslie Headland. So I give her credit that she's doing something very different and introduced something new. Because mm -hmm. there are a couple of characters I can really relate to. Mm -hmm. and like, like you said earlier, I'm excited to see how this will turn out later on. So in terms of rating, what do you give the first two episodes overall? Or you can just split it up between one and two. It's up to you how you want to do it. No, I'd say overall I give it a seven mm -hmm. because it's a pretty good start. And I don't expect it to be groundbreaking because like you said, it's new. So it's new territory, even though it's something familiar. So I also will give it a seven as well, which is a dinner party. I think that... There's definitely some things that slow it down. There's definitely also some things that may or may not be very cool. Or if you've seen it before, it's okay. So what? But I think that 
I do give them give uh, the showrunner Leslie Headland some credit as to hey present something that's fresh and new but somewhat familiar, which is good and it's hard sometimes to uh, have the fan base who's chomping at the bit trying to relive their nostalgia and then getting creamed online about it and this is not necessary i think that you and i share a much more objective view of it and hopefully that will be the case throughout these next episodes having said all that any other thoughts before we get into spoiler territory let's dive in okay if you like what we say about the acolyte and other content that we uh, have on our channel please share subscribe so it will help us out tremendously and thank you so much for your support we really do appreciate that so, spoilers ahead. So, let's just start with a very familiar character. <laughs> the showrunner, Leslie Headland talked a lot about the fact that they wanted to introduce the Matrix into the Star Wars universe. So, who better than to have Carrie Ann Moss start off this whole episode portraying Master Indara? And so there was a lot of Matrix stuff going on there. And I was trying to not make fun of it and try to be very open to it, even though I've seen it. I mean, some people haven't seen it yet because the Matrix is 25 years old now. And even the movies are almost like they're, they're like 20 years old, the, the sequels. And yes, there was Matrix Resurrections that came out three years ago. Wasn't very popular, but... In any case, it's nice to see her in this new role. What are your thoughts about the appearance of, of Master Indara? I'm happy for Carrie Ann Moss that he's doing a character that can break away the whole trinity, mm -hmm. the uh, masquerade that has been given to her. Mm -hmm. But this one, Master Indira, makes I'm excited for the character, but until later on, I'll tell you, which I'll reveal in a minute, that she is something more wise and something very different, but I'm something excited about. Unfortunately, she got killed already. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Which I'm like so pissed already at the show saying, why? <laughs> yes, because they made such a hype up thing about Carrie Ann Moss being a Jedi. Yeah. But then she got killed already. Yeah. So I'm like thinking, what the? I hope that the show runners will explain. But the scene of how she died, it just makes me think of how she became a master. Mm -hmm. Because, yes, Jedi is to protect the innocent and the and the weak. But the thing is, with how she was killed by the assassin, is to distract them and then, boom, get killed like that. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, she was trying to protect the barkeep. And also, we find out that the barkeep had a child as well that was, like, on the barkeep's leg. So I think that... She probably saw that. We did. We as the audience did not see that. So there was definitely the whole mantra of the Jedi of of using the Force as knowledge and defense and never to attack. She probably just really adhered to that mantra of the Jedi. It was really interesting to see that in action. And you get to see the assassin, as you mentioned, David. And so we don't know her name is May yet, but we just know that she's on a mission. And... Uh, it seems as though people have wronged her in her life and she's trying to take revenge, Kill Bill style. And then we get to see the other person who is part of this story, Osha, who is on a Trade Federation ship being a, what's it called, a mech tech? It's like a mech tech, right? I believe. No, she's a merc tech. Merc tech, that's right. And it's basically doing the job that the droids, droids. do on the outside of the ship and she's basically doing that here and here she also had this flashback of a very traumatic experience and we get to see throughout the first episode that she was rescued by jedi and presumably thought that her twin sister had died and this fire that, that showed the ship malfunctioning triggered her flashback and so she had got caught up in this moment. And it's interesting as they unweave or untangle all the mystery that's behind it. And I think that the episode did a good job of letting the viewers see it as it goes along and trying to wrap all the mysteries involved. So I think that was very good of the writers and also of the directing that was here. We get to see the Trade Federation people again, these villain intent cowardly rich people <laughs> and so they had a small role here in this in this episode 
where they're pretty much hiding Osha from the Jedi at this point. And then we get to see two Jedi come in on board. So it reminds me of episode one, where it was Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan, but now it's two younger Jedi. The left Jedi is named Yord, and the other one is, I can't recall, it's Jackie Lott, who's uh, portrayed by Daphne Keene. Daphne Keene, if those of you that remember, she was X-23 in Logan. So definitely some different Jedi that's that's here. And we get to also see that Yord has a yellow lightsaber. So I get to have, have this impression of your being this middle of the road type or doubting things you get to see hints here and there of him slowing down of what the the whole mission's all about and i found that interesting to see where his headspace is at and for jackie it was very interesting that she knows her role but she's mentioned a couple of times about how she wanted to have her mission to speak to master soul so that was really interesting in that she knows her place, but also at the same time, she's being very respectful of that master and Padawan relationship. Here we get to see that Yord and Osha had a history because we find out that Osha has a past with the Jedi being trained. And again, it reminds me of some things that we've had seen before with Ahsoka, because Ahsoka left the Jedi Order, Osha left the Jedi Order. There's some familiarity, and I think that if Star Wars, if you know this or that, you try to give it a chance. David, what are your thoughts about how the plot is being unwrapped in these first couple of scenes? Well, first, let me point out that Yor is played by Charlie Barnett, who was well known from the show Chicago Fire when the show first started, and also Ordinary Joe. Mm-hmm. And to answer your question, the showrunner is really smart. He's putting in nods. That's referencing to old, to other shows, which later on will reveal that Osha and May are twins, mm-hmm. which we'll find out later in this, in this episode. And also the nod to Ahsoka, who left the Jedi Order. But we don't know what's Osha's reason to why she left the Order yet. Mm-hmm. We know Ahsoka's reason because the Jedi Order didn't trust her and didn't believe her. Mm-hmm. And then she lost the, her trust and faith in the Jedi Order. And Osha <clears throat> still respects the Order. In Osha's case, she was brought in a little older because usually Jedi start their training when they were force sensitive as very young kids, from at least babies. Right. Uh, and we saw that in Tales of the Jedi with Ahsoka's story, yeah. pretty much, that they do yeah, train. So, yeah. so what happened to Osha is similar to like Anakin back in episode one. He was brought in as a Jedi because right. he was too old. So similar thing to Osha. But again, We'll find out more about her past and how she came into the Jedi Order and how she left the Jedi Order. And this is a picture of Ernestra, who is one of the uh, Jedi Masters that's in the Jedi Temple in Coruscant. And so I saw her as more of a Mace Windu figure. They don't really reveal too much about her just yet. Uh, We know that she does have a uh, strong respect for Master Soul. And there's also some tension between the two in terms of how they were going to proceed with this um, mystery assassin um, that we find out later on who who that is. But again, there's some tension there. Didn't really reveal too much about it, but hopefully later on we'll get to see that. Then we get to see Master Soul, who is, like you said, portrayed by Lee Jung Jae. Lee Jung Jae. Yep, from Squid Game. He is definitely measured in a lot of ways, but also at times he can be very assertive. So I think that he plays it in a way where it's very intriguing because he wants to take charge and he wants to defy orders but in other ways he's no let's just hand back here and chill a little bit and look at what the situation looks like and not be too hasty so i think that there was a very good balance of how he was able to go about unraveling this mystery and this is a scene where there was a prisoner that was on the ship where osha was on because she was arrested for killing Master Indara. And this prisoner was being sucked by a parasite who was trying to reveal the truth. It's very similar to the creature that was in Rogue One, if you remember from Rogue One. But the creature was much bigger. This creature was much Mm -hmm. smaller. It's like from Alien. And he was in a very panicked state. And so it was cool. Master was able to calm him down, and then he was able to reveal what happened to Osha 
and then they were able to find Osha. And this is where the ship crashed on a planet, and Osha survived. She also has a droid buddy, Pip. So a much smaller droid than, say, R2-D2 or K2 or any other droids that we're so familiar with. And here, Vernestra and Sol were discussing how to proceed with trying to recapture Osha. And he's, in some ways, defying orders here, trying to proceed and say, we need to go after her. Whereas Vernestra's like, we need to discuss this because now when we know there's her twin sister, May, that's out there, we need to make sure that uh, we'd be deliberative and strategic about it. He's like, let's just go find Osha first and before we go find May. And so it's really interesting to see tension that appears between the two. And then after that scene, we get to see May. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, maybe we even should rewind it a little back a little bit. That scene you just showed earlier, where Sol discussed with Vanestra mm-hmm. about how they uh, plan on this situation. Because one, it is clear that right now they need to confirm that what Moshe is saying is the truth. Mm-hmm. Because a twin is very unlikely to their eyes. But the thing is, Sol was there when Osha was rescued. So he knows about a lot of her past. Most people are trying to deny it, basically. But the thing is that when Sol intervened the capture of, of Osha, he actually senses that his former Padawan, she's telling the truth. Mm-hmm. Because the other guy, they're very skeptical because there's no way that they, they, it could be like that. Because there's also a lot of logical things that she has been trained for over a few years. Mm-hmm. How can someone who has not been trained for so long would be able to kill a Jedi Master? Mm-hmm. Which would lend to the scene after, after this one here, where May was seen at a, some coast of another planet to this lurking, mysterious figure mm-hmm. who said this, who is reciting some sort of their training, mm-hmm. saying that an acolyte must kill Jedi without weapons. Right. Because that's their training. And then when an acolyte is able to kill Jedi without master, they can go to basically the next level. Which then reveals the purpose of the title, the acolyte. Mm-hmm. The, the acolyte is the same terminology for Padawan, but for the Sith. Which is why when the red lightsaber was shown, that shows that one, it's a Sith. Two, may is the, is the Acolyte, mm-hmm. which is Padawan for Sith. So that's what revealed to it. So you can go to the next scene here, which starts off where May meets up with a traitor named Kimir, mm-hmm. Kimir. who is like her informant of finding out the Jedi mm-hmm. there. But the thing is that we don't know much about him, but, but then we saw her on another planet where there's another Jedi named um, Jedi Master Torben. Torben, yeah. So that's her next kill list. Then we brought to a scene where Master Soul and o- Osha are catching up to see what's going on. And we get to know about Soul a little bit more because there's a little bit of guilt in him, in his past, even though he said that he made peace of his past. But deep down, he still bothers him. Right. So when they arrive at the same planet where they found May, they did a stakeout here with the other local Jedi in that planet. Right. And then, later on, they saw May, which confirms that Osha was innocent. Mm-hmm. Osho was trying to confront May of her doings. Mm-hmm. And then when May revealed her face, it does, again, it comes confirm, and you're to take back what he said, that Osha was lying, but actually it was true. Mm-hmm. But then May, when Sol wants to invite her to come to say why she's doing this, and in reveal saying, your sister is alive. Mm-hmm. But May did not believe it because she would have found her like a long time ago. They were separated. What can you do? It's like Luke Skywalker and Leia. There was, but in this case, they found each other early, which led to the next scene here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where May stole a, a speeder car. And when, when she's about to leave, she, both May and Osha look at each other and confirm that both sides are alive. Mm-hmm. And they just couldn't believe it. And now May, at this scene here, she's questioning like, why was he fed, fed information that she died? I could have found her already. Same as Osha. Osha's case that there's no sign of other life besides her. Mm-hmm. We don't know what happened in the past in the fire incident in Brenbrook system. This scene here, Osha wanted to 
stun her, but at the same time, he doesn't want her to see her sister get hurt. She let her go, purposely directed the stun blast elsewhere, and then May sped off. Mm -hmm. And so, Saul witnessed it that he knows that he let her go, but at the same time, he understands why, because he needs answers. And also, May is heading to another planet right now, and to kill another Jedi. And so we find out that the other Jedi is actually Wookiee, <laughs> Kelnaka, on the planet of Kofar. And this was actually seen in Tales of the Jedi, where there was a Wookiee Jedi character that was there. So it was really interesting to, kind of, to, to see that the Jedi and then the Wookiee is coming together. It really, really mm -hmm. interesting. And also it's portrayed by the same actor who portrayed Chewbacca in the newer sequels. And so that's where the episode ended, actually, with this reveal at the end of episode two. And that was pretty much it of the first two episodes. Any final thoughts before we wrap up the Acolyte? Again, we have a decent start for the show, and we have a decent amount of time to get to know the characters. May, Osha, Sol, Vanestra, and Kumir. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of questions. Yeah. But we get to finally get to see the conflict within the Jedi, actually, and also the Sith. Because we've been seeing references and since Phantom Menace about saying, at well, last we have they have revenge. But the thing is, where were they? And we see a lot of video games dating back to the old and the high Republic. Lots of games invest into that. And then I'm sure that the showrunner herself is give her, I give her a lot of credit again, that she's really careful of how they she connects this show to the original series and all the other merchandise out there. Not merchandise, franchise. But I really enjoying this so far, especially Soul. And because I feel like I'm looking at Qui Gon Jin again, because he's very. This was just another nod of his character, because I read the books called Star Wars Apprentice, which tells the early days between Qui Gon Jin and Obi Wan Kenobi. The, the interaction between Osha and Sol is very similar to that, mm -hmm. because Sol is very down. He's very wise. He's very respected, but in deep down, he's sometimes like double thinking if he's doing the right thing or not, even though his is mind in a good place. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how it is and everything as we get to know characters being more. But the question is Kamir. Because mm -hmm. I'm thinking how the, in the end of the episode, May revealed when May revealed that she know that Osha's alive, he said he knows. Mm -hmm. And second thing is she he found that somehow found out where the loca location of the Wookiee Jedi, the Naka. And I'm like thinking, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. How does he know that fast? And how does he know that he's all the way that far? And how does he know that his that May's sister was alive the whole time? Mm -hmm. Makes me think of a theory. Mm -hmm. Is he the master? Oh, that's interesting. Because this kind of references to Senator Palpatine, mm -hmm. who is also Lord Sidious, mm -hmm. hiding in plain sight that people right. don't know. So that's a theory. Mm -hmm. But we don't know yet, so we'll see what happens. Okay. Wow, that's interesting. I see that Yord might be uh, on the fence, but he might be a he might be a double blind in some ways. Um, He's a buy the book Jedi. He looks like buy the book. He decides yeah. it says rule number blah 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 blah, and I'm like, okay, he's definitely by the books guy. Okay. Let, let's we'll see what happens with the next few episodes of the Acolyte, and that's how we thought about the first two episodes. Tell us what you think about the Acolyte so far. Oh, did you have something else to say, David? Yeah, I want to, I want to say one thing is personal to me because I'm like really happy that there is... This is a diverse cast, by the way, mm -hmm. for this show, which one, I'm happy for. And what I'm really happy for that we have an Asian guy as part of the main cast and there's more Asian reputation there because we need more as Asian reputation in shows nowadays. Mm-hmm. And I'm so glad that they casted Lee Jong Jae because last time we see something like this was Donnie Yen in in Rogue One and also Ming Na Wen uh, and Kelly Marie Tran and, and mm -hmm. but even though Kelly Marie Tran has a supporting role in the last Star Wars trilogy, but it's still a big step though that there's more age repetition there. I'm just really happy about it. So okay, on that note, tell us what you think about the Acolyte. Please share, subscribe for more content like this, and we will see you in the next video. All right, take care, everybody.